fan of tool watches. If you've seen any of my videos, you would realize that a tool watch for me, that's pretty much my comfort zone. I love having a timing bezel for all sorts of reasons, and I love having a watch that looks tough and can handle pretty much any adventure, whether it's on land or it's in the water. These days, I'm a work from home guy, and that's been my lifestyle for the last 10 plus years. So I don't need a super dressy watch, maybe one just for weddings and whatnot, just something that I can wear throughout the course of the day and I can be comfortable doing odds and ends around my office or home. Then I can just take off for a hike. I can go play golf or I can jump in the pool, a watch that's pretty much ready for anything. So when I came across Vero watches, it was through some other YouTube videos years back, but I also learned a little bit about the company over the years. I know they are located in the northwestern United States out of Portland, Oregon, and they get their movements from Swiss and Japanese manufacturers. And their roots come from American watchmaking. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in their early years, pre-pandemic, they used to machine and make a lot of their cases and components in-house using a CMC machine. But according to the website, they now source most of their components from a Swiss manufacturer. I can appreciate that because I can only imagine the undertaking that they had in the early years. If you watch some of their videos on what they did with their early timepieces, I always thought to myself, man, that is a lot of work. Seems like since 2020, they've made a bit of a change and I can still appreciate the fact that all their watches are serviced, assembled, and regulated right here in the USA. Being a tool watch lover and owning a Sin and a couple Damascos over the years, I've always appreciated the vibe that those watches had. You know that solid and precise German engineering vibe? Well, I get that same kind of vibe with the Vero Open Water. I know when the time's right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own another Damasco and another Sin. It's just really just a matter of time. But I had this opportunity to get hands-on with the Vero Open Water and purchase one myself. And it also happens, it was my favorite of the colorways they offer. You know, if you go to the Vero website and you look at the Open Water series, they have a red dial one, they have the dark blue one, the one that you see here, they have a gray one, orange one, yellow, and they have a black dial variant. They also have this new one that just came available. It's called the Safari Special Limited Edition. But what you'll notice when you look at the site, these watches are priced at $810 with the exception of the Safari Special Edition. It's a little bit more, but that's $810 with the NATO strap, $875 with the bracelet. That's only a $65 upgrade for the bracelet. Now I have a lot to say about the bracelet, so make sure you stick around, but that is an upgrade I would definitely take. For a micro brand, I'm sure you're thinking, yeah, it's probably a little steep despite the Swiss movement and Swiss components, but there's a catch here. What's included in the price is a 10 year warranty. That's a no questions asked warranty. That's pretty awesome if you ask me because most micro brands or even major brands, they'll give you a fraction of that warranty. A lot of them just one or two years and this one's no questions asked. On their website, they say that that's the best warranty in the industry, and I don't disagree with that statement at all. Before I get into the specifics of the Vero Open Water, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you have any experience with this micro brand, or if you ever had to use their 10-year no questions asked warranty, I would love to hear what you have to say in the comments down below. And I'm sure anybody else that's listening to this video would love to hear it as well. So thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. So if you watch some of my older videos, you know that I really do love micro brand watches. The reason why is that I love companies that will try something different and take on some risks. Being a small business owner myself, I can appreciate everything that a micro brand and a micro brand owner would go through on a day to day basis. Most of these companies, they're small businesses, and sometimes it's just a single person. So I appreciate them, and I love to support their cause. But to be more specific about micro brands, what I really love is I love micro brands that come up with their own design language. I remember about 10 or 15 years ago meeting an entrepreneur that sold his dot-com business, and he told me this. 
From across the room, you should be able to see somebody's smartphone or their laptop and know that they're browsing on your website. And everybody should be able to know that as well, just at a glance, from across the room. You know, personally, I think that translates for watches and good design. If I'm at a watch meetup, or I'm at a restaurant, or I'm at an airport, from across the room, I can look at somebody's wrist and recognize what watch they're wearing. That tells me that it's a great design. Now, whether you like it or not, it's a design that resonates with people, and I think that's a good thing. And that's how I feel about the Open Water series. When I look at this watch, I can definitely recognize that it's different from anything else I've seen. The matte bead blasted finish, the wider one piece and contrasted bezel, and that very visible and blocked, those blocked hour markers, it really stands out as its own design. But I also can see where it took inspiration from, and there's no direct copy from any watch specifically, but maybe if you look closely at the dial, the raised markers do look a little Tudor-ish. Or maybe at a glance, the dial may look like a Sin U50. You know, that blue limited edition one. But when I look at this specific watch, I think Vero. And what's really crazy is when I held this watch next to my buddy Mike's, his Sin 105, the build quality felt almost the same. Yeah, it may have been something to do with the matte bead blasted finish case, but the weight and the feel of the 316L stainless steel and the DLC coated bezel, maybe that was it, but it did feel very similar. This particular model is called the Crown Point, and it's named after the deep waters of the Columbia River Gorge. The dial, you would think, was black in most conditions. Unless you get out into the direct sunlight, you may notice that it is this beautiful, deep, deep navy blue. I was happy to have a blue dial watch in my collection once again because, you know, I must say that most of the time I just have black dial watches. But most of the time, this looks like a black dial watch unless you get it in certain lighting conditions. But take a close look at the chapter ring in the dial. Oh, never mind. <laughs> there isn't one. <laughs> Did you notice that the minute markers actually are located on the bezel itself? What a unique touch. It makes the dial itself very simple, extremely balanced, with no date window, and very clean with zero clutter whatsoever on the dial. While we're looking at the dial, look at the handset. These are like baton style black hands. And for the hour and minute markers, they have this block loomed at the end of the hands. It's tastefully done because they disappear into the dial in most lighting conditions. But look at the second hand. Yeah, that's a dark gray with a nice counterbalance and a white tip that extends to the edge of the dial. I'm 90% sure the markers, they are applied and raised. As I mentioned earlier, they look kind of tutorish, kind of like a Pelagos or something. Check out the beautiful loom on this watch. It's super, super luminova and it glows green and it's filled in on the bezel on each five minute marker. And above the double zero, the five, the 10, the 15 minute markers for timing purposes. Also the orientation and low light conditions, it's very visible because of that marker. And the hands glow for quite some time. It's not Seiko loom, but it's, Still pretty nice. If you look at the case, you'll notice there are hard lines, no polished surfaces, and really sharp protruding crown guard. Do you see that? But if you look closely, notice how the crown shapes in a curve with the crown guards. So nice. It really is a nice touch. The DLC coated bezel is very well done. There's been a few occasions where I've banged my wrist up against something and I would say to myself, well, that's gonna leave a mark on the bezel, and lo and behold, it still looks perfect. It does remind me of the Damasco DLC coated watches, which I've had two of them in the past. You know, and that puts my mind at ease, and I don't worry as much about scratching the DLC coating. It's allowed me to be a little bit more lenient with how much abuse I give this tool watch. The bezel action is unidirectional. It's a 60 click bezel. You can feel the decisive ball bearings underneath the bezel itself. There's a little bit of back play, 
But my only complaint about the bezel action is that you can accidentally advance it a position if you rub the bezel itself up against something like your pant or short pockets. If you, if you put them in too fast or too rough, it's not the norm for me, but it's happened to me in the past accidentally. So I just wanted to make note of that. Also take a, take a look at how thin the bezel is. And remember, there is no insert. So this is just a one piece bezel. And on every five minute increment, you'll notice that the loom plot is slightly raised where the numbers and the minute markers are engraved into the bezel itself. That's also a nice touch. And you can see how it glistens slightly if you're wearing the watch outside in the bright sunlight. If you pull out the crown, you'll realize that it's a fairly small crown at 5.3 millimeters, but it advances the time very easily unlike other small crown watches, which makes for a pleasurable experience when you have to change the time all the time. But once you screw down the crown, it disappears in the rounded crown guards. And I must also add at this point, it's probably one of their most, the most confident feeling crown actions I felt on a watch in recent memory. Maybe that has something to do with the Salita SW200-1 automatic movement. And this movement, by the way, has 38 hours of power reserve when it's fully wound. And it's also regulated within five seconds when Vero assembles the watch. And also there's no ghost date position. Thank God. Let's take a look at the case back. It's pretty plain, but etched tastefully, giving you the specifics about water resistance, having a sapphire crystal, and having a Swiss movement. I'm going to make an assumption that the Swiss Salita SW200-1 movement is the reason why Vero can get the case down to about 11 millimeters thickness. Now that's for a 200 meter dive watch. That's outstanding, it's so thin. Why can't other manufacturers do this? I should probably take this time to talk about the dimensions of the watch. The watch is a 40 millimeter watch from side to side. Lug to lug, it's 48 millimeters. Now the lug opening is 20 millimeters. And when you have it on the bracelet, you get a little bit of extra lug to lug because of the male end links. But the way that the bracelet drapes, I think if, even if you have a smaller wrist, you can pull this one off. There's a little bit of a drawback to having such a thin case and a thin profile. When you wear this watch on a bracelet and you do not have that extra thickness of a NATO strap underneath the case back, if you wear the watch like me, I wear it low on my wrist. Sometimes the crown guards can dig into my wrist a little bit because I wear the watch so low on my wrist. But as many of you know, I'm not a bracelet guy. I'm a NATO guy. And this watch on a NATO is downright sexy. But let me go back to the bracelet. This bracelet is the most comfortable bracelet I've ever had on my wrist, or it's at least within the top three or five of the watches that I've ever owned. And that's saying a lot. Take a look at the beautiful articulation of this bracelet. And when you can stack the bracelet links on top of each other like this, you know you're gonna have a very pleasurable wearing experience. But, as nice as the bracelet is, it does have a couple shortcomings. First one, it's the clasp. It's boring. And it's pretty much the run-of-the-mill micro-brand clasp. They could have done something a little nicer to give this watch more of an upscale feel. Especially some sort of under-the-clasp micro-adjustment. You know, a lot of micro-brands are doing that nowadays. The bracelet also doesn't have any half-links and the clasp only has three micro adjusts, so getting that perfect fit may be a little bit tricky, in my opinion. 
The second issue I have is the end links themselves. They are solid end links, but with so many companies offering quick release underneath the end links, I'm really surprised that Vero didn't go the extra mile in this regard, especially because there's no drilled lug holes in the case. And if you take a look at the solid end links, they are male end links. But the problem with male end links and this being bead blasted is there's a place right in the middle of the end link. You could see right there, it rubs ever so slightly. It's not a big deal to me, but I could see it being a talking point amongst other owners of the Vero open water. So ultimately, you're probably going to ask, how do I feel about the Vero open water crown point? Well, this watch has quickly become my go-to grab-and-go automatic tool watch. It doesn't have a date window, so I just grab the watch, set the time, and I go about my daily adventure. It's ready for whatever adventure that is thrown at it, and I like that. I mean, what else can you really ask for? And for a tool watch that's priced about half the price of a Damasco or a Sin, and having this 10-year, no-question-asked warranty, what's not to love? Well, if you've made it this far, let me introduce myself. My name's Blake. I'm a bit of, watch, bit of a watchaholic, if you can't tell. And I think if you made it this far, you're probably a watchaholic too. So anyway, I want to thank you for spending your time with me. I know it's valuable to you and I appreciate you being here and I'll see you guys on the next video.